Well, hello guys. It's me again. So, I told you I was going to be out for most of Unit D, and it's still your responsibility to learn, and yes, I am out again today. I have been chosen along with your other Earth Environmental teacher to be uh, a Biogen Scholar for this conference and be uh, honored. It's kind of like a mini award, but hey, we'll take it, whatever it is. So we are both out today, so no Earth Environmental Science teachers on us this campus. Darn. Well, anyway, quick announcements. Um, first, do not forget that uh, you have a test coming up in this week. Explore Day is happening this week. Uh, what else is happening? Oh, your field trip. Important announcement, your field trip. So nobody's there to collect your money for your field trip. So Thursday, Friday, bring that in. And I will go ahead and receive that and take care of that then. So don't give it to Mrs. Aida because she doesn't have her seat booking. Uh, that's not her thing. So. Speaking of Mrs. Aida, remember to be good for her. Okay. So I'm going to hook some people up from the last time. So keep in mind, you need to be good. Uh, was there anything else? Oh, second period. This one's for second period. Remember Thursday, video is coming in. A videographer is coming in. I need your slips, uh, permission to be recorded. So we gotta chop, chop, and hop on that. Uh, remember, turn that in. Got a little something, something for you. It'll be, you'll like it. You'll appreciate it. Trust me. All right, I think I've covered all of the announcements, and it is time to get started. So this one's going to be a little short and sweet today. Uh, we're looking at human impact on the hydrosphere. You were supposed to have copied those notes. So we are going to go over this briefly. And in addition to that, you have like an interactive sheet that is on Google Drive. Okay, it's on Google Drive. You need to make sure that you do your interactive sheet. You can do it in between. Uh, me talking and then going to it because it's done by slide or you can just watch this entire video and then do the interactive section at that point okay so either way make sure you turn it in when you get to google all right so impact human impact on the hydrosphere so the things that humans do that influence or affect what is happening in the hydrosphere? So the hydrosphere is that water layer, particularly. So we've been on surface water, groundwater, oceans. We've done all of that. So now we're going to dig a little bit deeper. Think about all the ways you have used water this week. It could be washing the car. It could be taking a drink, um, cooking, bathing. All those things are ways we use water. Okay. And, of course, there's more ways. But water is not evenly distributed everywhere on Earth. Now, yes, we have the same amount of water we had before thanks to the water cycle. We even drink the same water the dinosaurs drank. It's just recycled. Okay, Hopefully you read that book in second grade uh, or something like that. Are we drinking the same water the dinosaurs drank? But some places don't have access to water like it should. So you see it says evenly distributed. So... If we have the same amount of water, it's not evenly distributed, everybody doesn't have access, but why is that? So one of the reasons is simply because of their location, that there cannot be water near them. That is a possibility for them. Maybe there's just a bunch of earth, and the uh, ocean, lake, or river is just too far away. And that could be one of the reasons. Uh, another reason is water pollution. So you think about there's not drinkable water nearby. That could be an issue. Uh, if there is water nearby, then there could be a desalinization. I'm sorry, not desalinization. It could be ocean, and you can't desalinate the water properly. All right, I want you to think about how long this century is. If you have said 100 years, then you're correct. So over the last 100 years... The human population has grown three times. Okay. Not like grown like there's a baby and they've grown. It's like, you know, tripled in size, basically, is what it's saying, okay, as a whole, uh, from a previous one. 
And then global water withdrawal has increased seven times. It's normal. Okay? Or not it's normal what it was a hundred years ago. And about one sixth of the world's people don't have access to safe water. That's a lot. Okay, that's a good bit of people that do not have that access to that safe water. So the human population increase is going to increase the demand for water. Because everybody needs water for something. Now, I want you to think back again to the previous thing we were talking about, about not everybody has that access to that clean water. Could be because of pollution. Could be because they're not near it. Okay? There are folks that walk miles, literally miles a day to get enough clean drinking water for their family to use, okay? whether it's cooking or for cleaning, whatever it is. Uh, sometimes they have to drink the polluted water because there's no other water source for them to drink. A lot of third world countries, countries that are poorer than us and are still developing, uh, have to get water like their kids drop out of school because their kids have to take the chore on of getting water daily. Think about that. Think about the fact that if you had to stop going to school because you had to help support your family by being the one who walks miles a day just to get access to the clean drinking water. So the higher the population goes, or as the population increases, the demand for water will increase. Now, previously, we have spoken about dams, but we've talked about dams as alternative energy. And there's still alternative energy that didn't change. But when we're looking at dams, uh, in this section, we're looking at dams as a hydrosphere, as part of the hydrosphere, as part of that water um, cycle. Well... It's part of access to water. That's better. So a dam remembers a structure that is built across a river or stream that restricts the flow of water. So they build these dams as a way to block the water off and store it. So it can be used specifically for human use. Okay. So this creates a reservoir behind the dam. And that's in case of a drought or whatnot, that we have access to that. So this is used for the water that the dams are used for is drinking, uh, irrigation, electricity. So like I said, we started this in the uh, alternative energy unit. Dams can be a positive thing. We do need those. We have one close to us uh, about an hour, hour and a half that we have uh, through Duke Energy. And so dams are a good thing. However, there are some negative consequences about the dams. One is the ecosystem. So we talked about and previously that the dams are blockages. It blocks one part of the ecosystem from the other part of the ecosystem. Okay, so what you when you had two ecosystems, now you have one. Uh, so uh, organism can be cut off from its food supply, its food source, its shelter, and now it has to start all over. For example, and there's more about that in the video. Now groundwater. Remember that that groundwater is the water that is stored underground it can become polluted. So not only can the lakes and rivers that we have become polluted, the water that we have underground can become polluted by several factors. One, leaking chemical storage barrels. So if you have a storage barrel that is leaking, it's going to leak into the ground and eventually get to the groundwater. Landfills, okay, especially if a landfill is not properly uh, contained, it will cause the groundwater to be uh, contaminated. Fertilizers, we've talked about when in agriculture when they use the fertilizers, uh, the, oh, especially when it's uh, too much irrigation, the water will seep down. So yes, it can run off, but the water can also seep down into the ground and contaminate that groundwater. And sewage and septic systems can do the same thing. So uh, think about this can contaminate wells and communities drinking water as a whole. Saltwater intrusion is just that, it is salt water. Um, so saline, it says the movement of saline into a freshwater aquifer. Uh, so that where the aquifer is where that groundwater storage pockets are. So when water is pumped from coastal wells, a path is created for the salt water to flow to the aquifer. Can also occur due to storm surge from a hurricane. So if you're looking at, if you're near the ocean, mainly this is where you're going to get this, if it's near ocean water. Uh, those, those storm surges can affect. 
All right, and lastly, estuary degradation is sediments from erosion due to deforestation enter estuaries and impact water quality. So you have a lot of elements from the earth that can come in that are already there that can come in and affect it too. So it's not technically always something man, well, has a connection to man, but it's not directly something that man is doing, even though it is man's fault that it's happening. Another pollution factor that could happen is arsenic contamination. And arsenic is just a fair poison substance, and that's in one of your uh, videos for your interactive assignment too. But arsenic poison usually happens when uh, we line something. So it says it's caused by tube wells, water wells that drill down into the water table, and they are lined with arsenic. So that can become an issue. So as far as coastal waters go, 50% um, of the U.S. population lives near a city. And you're living near a city, you can still pollute. So inside those cities, the pollution can end up in the ocean. So that's definitely an issue that we, we have to face of. Yes, something we throw out here in Gaston can possibly make its way over to the Atlantic Ocean. No guarantees, but when it goes through the rivers, the lakes, and the streams, all those river basins, you got to think, where is it going to empty out into? Okay, it's going to either flow to another river basin, or eventually it's going to make it to some of it can make it to the ocean. Uh, another thing about the coastal waters is oil spills. Think about, we have spoken about, forgot which one, uh, Louisiana. Oh, the BP oil spill. So we spoke about that only a few weeks ago. And we talked about the deaths of the ecosystem and how it affects the organisms as well as the economic impact it had for those people in Louisiana. So oil spills are not hurting the ecosystem, they also hurt the economy. So looking at water conservation, we've already talked about the fact that there's no access to clean water for everybody. And 97% of our water is locked up in the ocean. That leaves us with 3%, but 2% of that is locked in glaciers. So we actually have 1% of the world's water supply that we are all using. So what are ways that we can conserve energy, um, conserve water? Yes, and we want to conserve energy at the same time. Uh, so, for example, that they give you is lose, use low-flow toilets or showers. So that's a way of not using all of the water coming in full strength, but still getting what you need done. Water purification plans, you know, we already have that kind of set by the city of Gastonia. Uh, so we don't worry too, too much. And it says use garden hole nozzles. So if you ever have the garden hose out and you're washing the car, you leave the water running, and that's just water that's being spilled out. However, if you use a nozzle, when you clutch the nozzle, you're only using the water that you have, uh, that you need at the time, so the water's not continually flowing. So there's other easier ways that we can participate in water conservation. Those are just some of the ideas. All right, guys, I will see you in a few.